Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this tutorial, I wanted to show you how you can make a series of uh, ribs between two points. By just changing these two points, you can see that this is going to update. Uh, this is the total height uh, of the project, which I'm going to explain. Uh, we're also going to use graph mappers to design that. So this is going to be the first curve, and we're going to use a separate graph mapper for the second curve. So I'm going to change here the minimum maximum movement for the first curve and I'll also have another one for the second curve. So for example I can use maybe a parabola, change the minimum and maximum movement and also there is going to be a point attractor which is going to affect the location of the graph mapper which I'm going to explain and then at the end we're going to convert that into a thickness and create this final results. So let's get started from scratch and learn this step by step. Okay let's get started from scratch. What I want to do here is to define two points uh, as the starting point uh, of the curve. So I'm going to right click here and set multiple points and for example I'm going to use shift to say they are in a straight path. Okay, now we have to control the height uh, of the curve, so I'm going to use the curve and primitive line SDL. Uh, let's go to the phone name, start, the direction is obviously going to be the Z, unit Z. And the length, we can give this a number slider, which is going to be the total height we're going to have in our project. We can also increase that to more, and let's rename this to height. Okay, so this is the first step we have to take. Okay, now that we have two lines, uh, we can select them by going to the set and list item. And by giving it to the list item, we can pick the first line and the second line. This is also going to be helpful because uh, when we write the algorithm for the first line, we can just copy paste this for the second one and use it again. Uh, because we're going to give two different graph mappers for each of these curves. Okay. The first one we can go to curve and use the division divide curve and divide this curve into a series of points. I'm going to use for example 100 which is going to be somehow a resolution so we can name this resolution and now that we have the points we want to move them in the y direction for this example you can move them in any direction you want. So let's go to transform and use the move. Uh, we can give it uh, Y. And for example, if I just type a single number, all of those points are going to be moved in the Y direction. Uh, but because I want to move them in a graph mapper way, nonlinear, uh, what I want to do here is to produce a series of numbers and then combine them with a graph mapper, obviously. So the first step is always when you have a series of geometries, for example, 101 point, uh, you can go to the set and create a range. Uh, this is like the best step you can do. Uh, for example, when you divide a curve into 100 uh, point divisions, it's going to give you 101. Uh, that's obvious. Let me explain this by... Uh, explaining that if you have a line and we want it to divide into two parts it's going to give us three numbers right so whenever we give any number to the count the points are going to be plus one the expe uh, exception is when the curve is closed so for example if the curve is closed and I want to divide it into two uh, obviously I'm going to have two points so remember that for the open curve, it's going to be 1 plus that number, and for the closed curve, it's going to be the same. Uh, here, when we give it to the range, it's going to produce a series of numbers between, by default, it's 0 to 1. We don't want to change this because 0 to 1 is ideal for graph mappers. And when you divide 0 to 1 to this resolution, you can see again it has uh, 101, let me show you here, uh, 101 numbers. Uh, obviously if I give that to the y it's really small and it's going to start from 0 to 1 which is not really 
that much. So what I want to do is to convert that into a nonlinear distribution. Okay, to use the graph mapper, you can go to the params menu, input, and use the graph mapper component. And for example, if I click here and say graph type sine, I can make this into a nonlinear distribution, which is a sine wave. Uh, we can write a function for that, but for now we're going to focus on graph mappers. Okay, uh, we can also combine them. For example, I can say I want to combine two graph mappers, one with the sine wave, another one with the linear. Linear is good, with, we can simply change the line by playing with these two dots. Okay, after having those two graph mappers combined, because it's between 0 and 1, we can go to the math and use this remap numbers. And remap numbers means scaling those numbers back. It means that we want to remap a series of numbers from a source domain, uh, which by default is 0 to 1, and that's okay because we didn't change the uh, range number. And now we want to bring it to a target domain. Okay, so remember whenever we want to make a series of numbers from scratch, and with a graph mapper, we use a range, we combine them with graph mapper, and then we scale them with remap numbers. And we also use a construct domain for the target so we can control the minimum and maximum. So for example, if I say from minus 100 to 100 with two decimals, this is going to be move one and to see control V, uh, move two, right? So that's going to control the domain of movement. Now if I give that to the Y, I think it's really too much. So for example, I'm going to put that into maybe minus 30. Okay, now that you can uh, check out the points here, you can see that this is like minus, this is the positive part uh, of the curve. Uh, and here we can control it easily. We can have multiple sine waves and we can play with it like here. Okay, uh, after uh, creating the wave, we can go to the curve and use a spline interpolation and give it to the vertices and just turn off everything to produce that wave-like function. Okay, we can even combine that with a Bezier distribution which is really cool. Okay, another thing I wanted to control here is to move this wave a little bit up and down. How can we do that? Uh, the technique is really simple. Let me explain here. Assume that this is the line, and these are the 100 points we had here. And we had this point attractor moving up and down on the line. So what we can do here is to find the distance between the point attractor and the other points, right? And use that uh, as the graph mapper. So instead of just simply making a range, that point attractor is going to create uh, the parts. So let me just bring this a little bit forward. And first, let's make the point attractor uh, curve. You can use the evaluate curve. We parameterize and we can give it a number between 0 and 1. You can see that we name that T or location. You can see that we can move that up and down. There is also another tool called curve uh, point on curve which is a slider inside the components, which you can move it up and down. You can right click and for example, select the mid, uh, but obviously we're going to go with the evaluate curve because now we have the point and we're going to use that as the point attractor. Uh, we also had those division points and now we have to compare them based on distance. Uh, we simply go to the vector and select the distance between the points of divisions and the point attractor. Now we have a distance. Instead of range, I'm going to put this down so you have this as the second technique. 
Now what we have to do is to bring those distances scale down to 0 and 1 because we want to use graph mappers. So I'm going to go to math, remap or scale the numbers back. Uh, because the source is not 0 to 1, we have to find it. Just simply use the bounds and give it to your distances. It's going to say it's between 0 to 69, whatever. We give it to the source. And now we have scaled it back to 0 and 1. Okay, now we can give it the graph mapper and remap number part here. So remember that remapping those uh, by giving it the bounds to the source and the target by default 0 to 1, we can get it ready for the graph mapper type and then we remap it back and now it's between 0 and 1 we want it to be between a new target okay now that we have that instead of this one I'm going to use this one and this is really cool you can see that I can change the location based on point attractor and let's just turn off everything and only turn on the point attractor and you can see that this is going to affect the location of the graph mapper. So this is how you can control uh, the, let's go to the non graph mapper with a pointer tractor. Okay. Now that we have this uh, on the first curve, I'm going to just bring this forward. We can group this. So remember that you can always, I'm going to save this file. If you want to download it you can always use this one if you want to use uh, without any point attractors but this one is the most important part okay now that we have this I'm going to just control C control V that and this time use for the second line obviously we want to use maybe another sign summation Now that we have those two curves, which uh, we can just turn off everything. Remember that we have to turn on the point because we want to change their location. And now we can create, uh, let's bring them inside a curve container. And also another one here. And let's make a twin curve between these two. So let's go to curve, spline twin curve, curve A, curve B, and the factor is between 0 and 1. Again, we can use the range component, or just go to the set range. It's between 0 and 1, and we can give it a step. This is the count of the twin curves. And now you can see that we can design by just using graph mappers, which is really cool. Uh, we can even use this parabola. Change the location of the point attractor. Make the first one more sine wave. Change the location. And we will have this series of twin curves here. Okay, at the end, we just want to convert them into a solid. To do that, we can go to surface and use a bounding box. Give it to here. Uh, because it's going to make a bounding box for all of them, I'm going to right click and make a union box. Uh, let's go to surface and deconstruct it. So we will have the faces now and pick up the back face. So it's like selecting the face of the back. Uh, let's give this a number slider. It is two. And now you can see that it's always going to update based on the curves we're going to produce, especially based on the minimum and maximum it's going to affect. Let's go here and play with this number. You can see that it's sticking to the curve location. So whenever we change that, it's going to make a back based on a bounding box. Uh, now we can move them a little bit back. So transform, 
and move in the y direction. This is going to be actually a little bit like the minimum thickness because it's, uh, you can see it's sitting on the curve here. So I'm going to say this is like minimum thickness. And now what we have to do is to um, make the solids. So I'm going to bring all of these twin curves here. Just a little bit back. And project them on this surface. So project, or you can find it from transform. Project uh, onto a plane and project all of these. If you give the surface to the plane, it's going to automatically find the plane of that. So it's okay. And now we have them here. Okay. If we love these together, to love uh, them two by two, you have to graph that. Uh, I usually do that. This is like the best technique I always use. Let's use the shift key, bring it in one container and see if they are a group of two. And now we can see it's not because the zeros are a little bit different. So uh, uh, in addition to grafting, you also have to simplify that. So simplify, simplify, and check that out again. We have a group of two and then we can loft it. But I prefer not to loft because if I bake that, you can see it's making something like this, which is not really that necessary. We just have to make that into a closed surface. Uh, so what I usually do is to use a curve and start an endpoint and then use a line with two points connect the start to the start connect the end to the end and remember that it has to be grafted because we want to make them into groups now we can go to curve utility join and join everything together. So it's going to be the front curve, use the shift key, the back curves, the lines, and you have to check it out that it always has to be in groups of four. So again, if you don't see them adding up and there is some zeros here, simplify everything. So you can just simplify the lines. Let me see if this is breaking it, no. But anyway, if you don't see them add up, Remember to simplify everything so you have a group of four and now you have those curves closed and now we can just turn off everything and use a arms menu surface container or just go to surface boundary container okay let's give them a color from custom preview and I usually use a surface B rep edge to see the edges. Okay, so that is going to be the number of divisions we have here. This is going to affect the right and left curves by playing with the graph mappers. That's going to help us explore Our design we can just change the location of the point attractor and get this one okay uh, after producing the surfaces we can also extrude them uh, let's go to surface freeform extrude I'm going to give this extrude to the preview so we can see it the direction is obviously in the X direction and the distance is going to be, let's go back here that we have those two lines. Mm. Or we can just go and get the start and end points. Okay, we just give that end points, for example. We want to find the distance between these two points. Because they are in groups, I'm going to flatten that and pick up two of them with the list item, the first one and the second one. 
and now we can use the vector distance and we can give that to the x it's going to be the fit of that if you want to make it a little bit uh, with a gap we can give it a multiplication for example we can say we want from 10% to uh, 1 but anyway number smaller than 1 is going to be let's go give this a percentage so it's the 10% of the total thickness allowed to completely 1 if I go to the rendered mode and let's change that to black for the normal so you can see the edges you can see that I have the outputs here just turn that off it's also visible in the shaded mode and now we can play it by just increasing the number of parts we have four more parts here and also in the rendered mode and playing around with the point attractor the graph mappers I can also give this to a sine wave change the location by the point attractor and also play around with the minimum and maximum and design this uh, parametric wall inside grasshopper remember that you can download these uh, example files all from our website parametrichouse.com and remember to subscribe to our channel like this video share it with your friends and let me know in the comments uh, if any additional uh, examples you need so we can record the tutorial thanks for watching see you next time bye